Hi guys, welcome back to the G2 Esports Class Legends Invitational. We just saw the first match we castled with Solo, this match between Zedalot and Sansifka, which ended up Zedalot winning with his priest against Handlock, which is an awesome, awesome turn of events. And um, Sotl, how do you predict the next match will go? What do you think about Tice? Uh Oh, by the way, Tice just won a tournament, right? So He has, yeah. What do you have to say about that? The, uh, the $13,000 bash off the top of his deck, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That, that last game was... Uh, sorry, just talking about the other tour for a second. That last game was crazy. The Savits tice final where there was dreaming of Varians and all sorts of things, both pulling Aceras and just crazy, crazy business. And Savits making the decision to go for the guaranteed lethal setup with the Aceras, getting punished by Bash as the last card. That was uh, completely crazy, but... Tice is an absolute warrior, just straight off that marathon tournament in the in the Curse Trials. He's he's back in play now, and no easy game for him up first. He has the might of Kalento to contend with. Yeah, but imagine if he wins a back-to-back -back win in a tournament in two tournaments in a row in, in a span of less than forty-eight hours. Right. That would be just so cool as a story, story uh, for 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 Tice as a player. Yep. Not only because he's on G2 and he's a, he's my teammate, but uh, I would just love to see someone pulling that off, right? Because we've we I think we casted all three uh, Divinity together, right? Where Fibat was winning them back to back. Like... Uh, no, 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 the the first one where Fibat won, I was actually playing. Oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah. sorry for that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I I mean, only Fibat is known for like pulling that kind of stuff, right? Like winning back-to-back -back tournaments. And uh, I would love to see other players doing that consistent, um, those consistent results all the uh, time, right? I'm just going to throw a plug in here before we get into the game. On the subject of teammates, uh, Mr. Super JJ did win, uh, I believe, Seat Story and then a, a oh, yeah. man right. online back-to-back yes. in the course of a week, so. Yes, you're, you're totally right. And we'll see Super JJ in this tournament too. Yes. Uh, anyway. Moving back into proceedings here, it looks like Tice is on Warlock. And it looks like one of his decks is Zoo. So it looks like he's going for the more predictable, traditional lineup of uh, Zoo plus a Control Warlock deck. And Kalento is going Druid here. And it looks like he's opened with Aggro Druid. So I would presume that his lineup is Aggro Druid plus Midrange Druid, which seems pretty solid. Any lineup that includes Midrange Druid sounds pretty solid. Um, but yeah, Druid, definitely a solid choice. Warlock, one of my most expected choices for this tournament. Um, and he's going to have to now Kalento choose whether he's going to Living Roots down this uh, Flame Imp or just contest it with the Lepanome. It looks like he's going to hold on to his coin for now. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about matchups, right? Sure. Um, wait, uh, Kalento is Warlock? Kalento's Warlock. Uh, oh, Kalento's the Warlock. I had it the wrong way around. My apologies. Yeah, uh, but so let's talk about the matchups. So <laughs> let's assume. Um, that Zoo is in general favorite against Midrange Druid, right? Because the sheer amount of body and health points you put on board is yep. problematic for the Druid to, to deal with, right? Because you would um, you would need to have a force of nature to clear three minions to mm -hmm. somehow uh, get the value out of your cards. You need double swipes or a swipe of an Azure Drake to deal with the board. Otherwise, you're being overwhelmed by the amount of minions that Druid will just put on board. But in the aggro matchup, how is that different? Uh, I mean, any any outright face deck against Zoo tends to have a good time as long as they can establish some early damage with early minions that, that uh, sorry, Tice does have. Um, just because of the nature of the Warlock hero power, Zoo will run out of cards. They are forced to tap to refill on their hand. Um, so as soon as they start doing that, you're starting to threaten burst damage. Um, Agro Druid is a little bit weaker than something like Face Shaman or Face Hunter against Zoo, um, because most of their damage comes from physical attacks, melee attacks. So you ha do have the chance to wall out something like Force of Nature Savage Raw combo uh, or Druid of the Claw Charge using, you know, Void Walkers, Defender of Argus, etc. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Zoo with a strong draw can definitely contest with that a little bit better than the, the spell damage from hand style face decks. Um, but generally, any any deck that's super aggressive has a pretty decent matchup against Zoo. What? Yep, that's um, that's spot on. As usual, so <laughs> you're really good at this. So Thanks, why don't you buddy. play more? Why don't you play? <laughs> I, I, people keep hiring me to talk nonsense about Hearthstone. Come on. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, just wanted to talk about other MVP in this in this matchup, which is Keeper of the Go. Like, this card is basically at least two for one against any Warlock deck that relies on minions. Right, because it, it buys you... It's a, an Arcane Shot on the body that is capable of dealing with two minions at the same time. Absolutely. I'm just laughing to myself. I love watching Tyson's facial expressions when he plays. He's not a hugely overstated player, but he has these little subtle expressions that he makes when he plays that really amuse me. And there was just a little uh, seems good moment while uh, when the knife juggler hit perfectly there to help him clear out two minions. It's a very uh, ballsy move from Tice to, to go for the knife juggler uh, plus the minion generation. Yeah, it's two damage either way, but by using the living roots as directable damage, you've got to just snipe down the 2 2 straight out on the target you wanted. Um, Knife Juggler was a little bit more risky. You get the two damage plus the two 1 1s on board, but the knives could have gone anywhere. So uh, a little bit risky, but he does get paid out for it, picks up some uh, really nice trades onto the board, and now he's looking in a very, very comfortable position to. Uh, to push a decent amount of damage this turn. And as you mentioned, Keeper of the Grove coming out as MVP here. Clean clean snipe on the uh, Flame Imp and just push a ton of damage to face. Yep. And we know that um, Colento has five mana, so whatever he can do is basically drop a Doomguard. And that Doomguard doesn't necessarily do much in this situation, right? It clears up a minion, of course. Right. Yep. But, but then you lose your whole hand and if you lose the, the Doomguard itself, then you're being exposed to the damage from small minions that you can deal with. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a very difficult situation for uh, for Colento. I'm just having flashbacks. Um, I heard Tice interviewed. It may have been at uh, Trucilver, Insomnia Trucilver Championships in the UK. Um, I think he met like there was a tournament he brought Agro Druid to and didn't do well in and he was interviewed afterwards and he said, you know, people told me Agro Druid was really good and I should bring it, but I didn't really know how to play it. So, you know, I was trading too much, I didn't really understand like these YOLO Fell Reaver plays, etc. Um you see a little bit of that here from him maybe as he uh took a little bit of defensive play, maybe trading a little bit more than he needs to. Mm -hmm. Um respecting the the power of the haunted creepers a little bit too much maybe um but the lower third coming down here pretty strong um doesn't really lock out anything but it's a, a decent contesting minion on the board and tice now has to make the decision whether he values this three two in stealth or whether it's time to just go all out face mode with that 12 damage that he has over the next two turns with the two force of natures i think stealth is the way to go here right because I agree. uh there's no way oh. <laughs> okay never mind never mind so how much damage? He pushes seven. No, I mean, actually, I like this. He pushes seven damage, right? Which puts the Warlock to exactly 12. And then mm -hmm, his mm -hmm. hand has exactly 12 damage in it over the next two turns. I was just thinking that there's no way hand, uh, sorry, uh, Zoo can deal with a stealth minion. Right. I, I agree with that point, too. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned, this isn't a, a deck that Tice is notorious for playing. Um, obviously, he's an incredibly good Hearthstone player, and one of the skills that strong Hearthstone players have is being able to adapt and work out decks on the fly. Um, but we may see one or two more, maybe questionable decisions from Tice than we we will when he switches to mid-range Druid, which, of course, is probably the deck he's more comfortable with than anyone else in the world. So. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, it seems like a turn when you just drop Force of Nature deals six damage to the face. Seems good. Let's do it. And uh, Next yeah, turn these... you have eight damage. Right. So living roots, yeah. Even if he, if your opponent drops a defender Vargas, mm -hmm. you can trade. Yep. And deal with two biggest minions, or oh, just drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tice, Tice, uh, don't, no, 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 don't, no. don't you consider trading? Good boy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Even if your opponent drops defender Vargas, you just drop Doctor Boom. Right. In that case, and that's basically it. Yeah, and then like the boom bots are pretty much representing lethal on their own. So. Yep. And knife juggler, Argent Squire, gonna hope to shoot down the two one. Gets it. Small consolation though. This is uh, all pretty much irrelevant. Tice can pick his poison here as to which card he wants to reveal, and I imagine he'll go. No. Okay. So he either chose to reveal he was playing second living roots or second force of nature. It was and I guess it, it would be correct to use the force of nature, right? This is I, a small thing, but I think I, it, it, it would be correct to play the force of nature in this case. I agree. Interesting, because now we'll see if Colento will switch the deck. Right. And I don't think he should. Because uh, other warlocks might be even more sub... Uh, like, yeah. more... Uh, 
like weaker to aggro druids or midran druids yeah it's possible if you're if you're bringing zoo as one of your decks though that your your other control warlock deck is highly teched against aggro mm -hmm. um because you know outright face aggro as we discussed earlier is one of the decks that functions really really effectively against zoo so you may wish to have that insurance by having a really really uh stable healing heavy warlock deck as your as your control deck but we'll see what kalento chooses to go with here i'm really interested like um kalento we're using the deck b so that's different that he chose to start with right no no he actually stays with the deck yeah he's sticking with zoo interesting so he's sticking with zoo that tells us that his second option the second second deck is i assume weaker to burst ah well i mean there's also a mind game play here right no 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 Tice, no, no, Tice, no, no because Tice, Tice has to stick Tice has, yeah. has to stick with this deck so yeah. Yeah. you either get better matchup or you deliberately sabotage your own advantage <laughs> i would say like kalanta wouldn't do that right although also okay so there is an element here that at some point kalanta is going to have to win two games in a row from this point so say he defeats this deck with his control warlock deck tice can just immediately switch to what will almost certainly be mid-range druid which just okay. naturally destroys all control warlocks um so it might be he wants to pick up a win with zoo so that tice is in a more awkward position as to what to counter pick in the next turn um and these these are all sort of small considerations, but Kalento is a very involved um, player in these sorts of metagame decisions. So these might all be considerations that are going through his head, but it's also equally possible, Lothar, that the simple explanation is that he just feels this is this is a better matchup. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. That might also be the, the plan, like the long-term plan. Yeah. Uh, other thing I wanted to point out is that Zetalot played Priest, his comfortable class and the class that is associated with him as a play, right? Uh, Stan Sivka chose Warlock, which I guess we might say the same, right. but maybe not to to such extent. Like yeah. it's not su such a strength, a strength, uh, strong association of the class with the player. But then we have Ties, who is like Druid in incarnation, right? For for, <laughs> yeah. the, for the whole uh, for, for for his whole existence in the scene. And then we have Colento. Would you put Colento on any class? Ah, uh, not really. He's he, he kind of plays all over the place. I mean, he plays a ton of Priest as well. He's got extremely high ratios on, on ladder with Priest. But um, from watching his stream, he tends to just hop around and his tournament lineups are usually just strong metacles. So I wouldn't really associate him too much with an individual class. Would you, Lothar? Yeah, I would agree. Like, maybe maybe some time ago, I would say Colent is one of the Priest players. Right. Right? Or the Rogue player. Yeah. Because... Those decks require a lot of uh, like combinational strategy, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, in general, I would say Colento's like one of the better overall players. The same the same thing I would say about his teammate from Cloud Nine, which is Strife Crow. Right. He's, Agreed. He was known for being um, the Druid player in the beginning of the game, mm -hmm. but then he was get uh, like he was he was more known about uh, for for being the beatdown player. For being the aggressor, right? Mm -hmm. and, and not only being associated with Druid in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, we see an interesting line develop here where um, Kalento had the chance to coin out a knife juggler on turn one to immediately contest a potential Darnassus Aspirant. Chose to follow his curb instead with the Argent Squire. And that means that uh, Tice has some ramp available to him here. With, uh, as you said, the MVP card in this matchup, Keeper of the Grove, being able to deal, essentially, Battle Cry Destroyer 4-4, which is a pretty sick Battle Cry, all things considered. Yep, that's true. I would immediately just play that for 4 mana, Silence, an Egg, which is a potential threat to your whole deck. I, I think, like, the Egg is the MVP uh, in this matchup. If you buy time with an Abusive Surgeon on a PO, right? You kill a minion, you get a 4-4, which helps you a lot to deal with with minions from the druid deck so seems like the most one of the most important cards uh, in the deck and now it's being traded for zero value right and this is um this is the danger of letting the the druid player ramp with the dancers aspirant um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this i mean <laughs> Aspirin has kind of switched out of the meta a little bit. People have moved away from it because people expect it so heavily. Um, but part of the discussion when that change was happening and evolving is that when Aspirin becomes unexpected again, just bring it back in because then it'll be extremely powerful again. Once people stop keeping Dark Bomb and Frostbolt against Druid, for example. Don't you think 
please continue. So I'm just going to say, like, I think that's the situation we saw there where, you know, maybe Aspirant just kind of slipped Kalento's mind and he just let it get carried away. Because even, even though trading a knife juggler into your opponent's two drop is not a, a situation that feels good, sometimes it's just necessary against the, how powerful Darnus' Aspirant is for Druid. And again, the ramp just lets him play a Fel Reaver this turn. Uh, but will you, will you play that? I mean, it doesn't necessarily... Um, like the burn is not that important in this situation, even though your opponent has a coin, right? right? Because there's no way that um, your opponent wouldn't have used a a abusive surgeon or a PO already. Yep. And you can clear the board here easily, so there's no way of clearing that. Uh, it's not clear the board, but but the, to um, destroy the biggest threats on the board. So having that fell reaver on board just deals so much damage. Because yep. there's no way of removing it when you know there's there are no buffs in your opponent's hand. Yep, absolutely. And I mean, losing the aspirin there is no big deal either, because he just has the play straight back into Druid of the Claw for the next turn to protect his Fell Reaver. Um, Defender of Argus is here to kind of make an annoying wall out of that um, Argent Squire, but it's just not good enough without being able to taunt another minion alongside it. But honestly, looking at Kalento's hand, he has one of those awkward zoo hands where. I don't know, I, I sometimes get this feeling with the new Zoo. I think the deck is generally a hell of a lot more powerful than it used to be. Uh, but the philosophy of Zoo in the original days was making sure every card you life tapped into was a playable threat. So you were always drawing good cards. Now when you're putting more powerful swingy cards into the deck, like Bran mm -hmm. Bronzebeard, like Gormok, there's this chance that you get these hand, this handful of just cards that aren't proactive on the board, are too situational. Um, and that's the kind of hand that we see Kalento sitting on here, and I think he's just going to start taking eight to the face repeatedly right now. Yeah, I agree completely what you just said. Like, it seems very, it seems just clunky sometimes, right? right. The zoo is just not being efficient as it was was before. The first incarnations of zoo were basically I play a efficient minion for the mana that it for the mana cost, mm -hmm. and the power of the minion, like additional. Um, additional power from from the minion itself is just a bonus on top of the body now it's more about the the fact that the minions have less value when it comes to the body cost i mean the the cost and the body value and it's more about the card advantage that it generates right and then we see a situation like this when the the draw is being really awkward I just want to point out, uh, we, we said, or uh, well, I said a couple of times before that Ty's not the most comfortable with this deck, but what we saw there with the Innovate Hero Power to kill the 1-1 one, one is actually a really high level play because he understands the only thing that can keep Kalento in this game right now, which is Defender of Argus. So mm -hmm. by removing that Argent Squire from the board, he's removing the potential for two taunts, which means he almost certainly gets to push through more damage to face next turn. And that Innovate in his hand is looking like a dead card unless he draws exactly Force of Nature. That's probably the only thing Innovate would be useful for at this point. Yeah. Uh, just to Innovate out an early combo. So just Innovate for the extra hero power, snipe down the 1-1, one, one, denies the Argus play. It looks like Kalento is going to go for the double battle cry here just to try and pick up some answers to this Fel Reaver. And very, inform very important informations are being now uh, shown from the burns. Savage Roar and a second Keeper. But that's lethal, right? Yeah. That is lethal. Again, Tice with the seems good face, and he's going to charge it out. Savage Roar is going to finish this game out, and Kalento's decision, uh, perhaps that he felt this was the better matchup, or perhaps a, a more long-term investment in trying to pick up multiple games in a row, whichever way his mind took him, it has not worked out, and Tice has gone out to an extremely quick 2-0. Yeah, this might seem less, like I said like I said in the beginning of the broadcast. We don't know the format because it's the first time anyone uses that. So the games might last 10 minutes or 90 minutes. That was the case in the first match between Zetalot and Stan Sivka because it was 3-2 with control matchups basically. Mm -hmm. Where here between Tyson and Colento we see two aggressive decks battled out. So it goes really, really fast. And uh, Colento is sticking yeah. to his Zoo deck. Yeah, I think interestingly enough, I think this time you actually have to stick with Zoo, right? If, if, if you're 2-0 down and you switch to a Handlock or a Reno Lock in this situation, you just lose the series. It's over. You might win this game, but mm -hmm. then your you know your Handlock just it has has to go up against a mid range Druid. That's just a horrible matchup. 
Um, so I think he definitely has to try and pick up at least one matchup, one win in this matchup here with the Zoo against the, the Agro Druid. It's a matchup that he obviously feels relatively comfortable with to play three times in a row. Um, but we see Tice keep getting these uh, these very powerful early starts. And if the, the Druid deck is able to match minion for minion early against the Zoo, then uh, it's going to be in a really comfortable position. The, the weakness of the deck is that it doesn't play as many early minions to be consistent. Um, but Tice keeps getting these really strong draws, and he has an another one here with the Knife Juggler into the Lepinome and Living Roots on turn two. Yeah, that's like super powerful, unless Colento will draw from top of the deck a boost of the attack. So a Direwolf Alpha or Abusive Surgeon, that's what needed. And he's not drawing that, so he might pay an ultimate price of being eliminated already because of the explosive draw that Tice has on turn two. That's insane. When yep. you think about it. Um, just thinking, what's the right way to sequence this? Immediate idea seems to be to put the three into the Voidwalker first. No, no, then... I don't think so, because you no. might trigger the right. egg, right? With the yeah. juggles. That's what I was going to say. So, like, that seems to be the immediate plan, because the three... You're so unlikely to get three knives into that Void Caller that just getting rid of that first seems right. But then you have three knives to potentially snipe the egg, which seems really risky as well. Oh, it's like it's for Tice that is going to go for this line. That's yeah. interesting. So, bad things could happen here. Let's see. And he snipes one. one time the egg, and he—I think it's the second time. Yeah, yeah. He sniped. Oh wow! This now, might... this third knife is actually really important. They'll decide whether it contests the knife juggler or not, and that is the worst possible outcome for Tice. Do you do you, do you think that was the correct play? I think that was very risky and low reward. Right. So he could have. Play, like summon the minions first to throw the knives but then he has the potential of perhaps not dealing any damage to face that turn um so i don't know i mean on average the knives hit that egg one and a half times right so yeah on average the egg doesn't get popped but obviously one and a half isn't a number um so uh i mean it's it's really really close i can understand tice wanting to be the aggressor in this matchup and just taking the most aggressive line possible and even now, you know, he has four minions in play against one minion. So he's going to retain some sort of ball present to go face this turn. Um, so I think it was relatively low risk, um, but he's going to need to draw a little bit of help. And this is a savage raw turn, Lothar. Yeah, it is. It's eight damage. Yep. It's three mana, eight damage. I don't see a way. I don't see a word when you don't play a card like that. Yeah. Because I... it diminishes in value over time right now with current board state and uh, your current hand. It doesn't make any sense to use your hero power instead and just, you know, because you get basically the same. By using Savage Roar, you get a hero power without yep. the armor. Yep. You will kill the 4 1 minion anyway, or you will kill the Undertaker or the, uh, the Dark Peddler. I guess you yeah. kill the Peddler with that. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say there's an argument to killing all three of these minions. I think I would almost certainly rather kill the 2 2 than the 4 1, but there is definitely a debate to killing the Undertaker as well. And we'll see what Tice ends up going for here. I don't think you kill the 4-1 because it just doesn't contest anything on the board successfully. Yeah, that's a good point. But you you, you will kill the Undertaker because it, it kills your 1-1s. One yes. Right? Yep, there we go. Chooses to take out the Undertaker. And, oh, a little bit of I mean, Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with this. He pushes 7 to face still. He's still in a reasonably solid position. But he's going to need to pick up some help next turn. Uh, Savage Combatant or something similar would be a decent draw. I saw someone in the tournament actually use Brand Bronzebeard into Flame Imp, you know? To deal 6 damage to the face, but not the, the correct one, so... Yeah. Um, Colento doesn't, do, doesn't okay. do that mistake. Wow. You know what would be cool? An Innervate. That, that would be <laughs> a good card right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be even better to ju just use it for the force of nature. Just to clear the board, right? Uh, I think I'd probably still if I if, if we had an innovate, I think I'd still savage combat and innovate hero power. But... Oh my god, Ooh. a draw! Ooh. Well, you still have low tip, right. but I think but... like you have to respect that savage combat, right? Yeah, exactly. You just That's have what to I was thinking. Guards. I think you have to. You will discard four cards, but I hope. But luckily <laughs> for you, you you only have two, so that's not that bad. But I, I guess what you just said, so important to kill that Savage Combatant because it, it presents so much value over time. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the play we're going to go for here. And now this is this is more the position that Zoo is, is fairly comfortable in and can definitely win the game from. But look at that. Perfect answer for the Doomguard. Yep. 
That is a pretty solid pickup. Um, next turn, we're going to have to get the decision here from Tice as to whether he uses Force of Nature to clear further, or whether he's going to... I mean, it'll be dictated by whether what he picks up on the following turn, but he may look to just make a board play on the next turn, go for Dr. Boom, and then quickly follow it up with a combo afterwards. But I don't see any other play available to him here except Keeper of the Grove on the 5-2, and suddenly we're in a relatively even board position again. Yep. Oh, that's not a good draw. That's a whiff. I, I guess you need to tap, because otherwise you, you can't even win anyway. Ooh, plus four up. damage. Yeah, sure. You can kill um, the Keeper of the Grove and still have a Bran alive. Mm -hmm. And it's not important to deal the face damage as much uh, as having board control right now. Because you saw one Savage Roar. But once you leave a minion on board for the Druid, he's, he is just in such a favorable position to win the game anyway. Okay, so based on that Living Roots draw, I think we are mandated to use the Force of Nature this turn. Yeah. I don't think you're going to race him quick enough from this position with just a Living Roots. Uh, so Force of Nature, take out the three biggest minions, leave just the Argent Square alone, and hope that it's a, a low power draw from the Zoo, which is actually very likely since you saw Doomguard play discarding lower and, and Doomguard. Yeah. Exactly, so uh, there's no more big minions. Right. Oh, oh my god, that's that like is... the, the most terrible draw because you can't even use it on your own minion because it generates zero damage. Yep, <laughs> implosion divine shield kappa. We, we've all done it once, okay? Yes. Like, yes. we have all done it once. I don't well, you have to check want. it, right, for yourself yeah. because you can't trust anyone else telling yeah. you, yeah, it just doesn't work. <laughs> And there is the Dr. Boom, so the, the line works out really nicely here. Defender of Argus is pretty solid here on a Divine Shield minion, and he has the chance to take down the Dr. Boom incredibly efficiently. Uh, no, you can't. Well, then you'd untoned up one minion. Uh... Because you can't put the Defender of Argus in the middle, because even if you hit four, the... Oh, yeah, you're right. So you'd have to put Argus to the right-hand side of the Squire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, left-hand side of the Squire. Yeah, but it, th this is why I was thinking about maybe implos uh, playing Implosion on one of the bombs. Because mm -hmm. you have no chance of... Like, first of all, it's 25% to deal 4 damage. And then you have to put your Defender of Argus on the left side. So you don't have Taunt Minions. Right. Which are very valuable in this matchup. So it's might be more important to kill the minions right now, the small minions, to avoid situation when there's another Savage Roar being played. Yeah, makes a lot of sense, but the, the two-roll implosion has definitely punished him here, and he's going to have to find some way of dealing with this board. He's going to choose to taunt up the low-value minions here. Oh, wow. Put some that's, damage into this. Wow. That's a really interesting play, and it, that's the game, right? Because you Savage Roar... And uh, you have, f you deal with the bombs with the taunters, and you have nine damage to the face with the with the the Doctor Boom eleven, yeah. and then the Living Roots, and that's it. Well, um, yeah, that that series. I'm, I'm trying to avoid using the word anti climax based on the last series, but that yeah, was a well, blowout from Tice. Uh, definitely not reaching the dizzy heights of excitement of the previous game. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you see, Tice playing a very unfamiliar deck to him. Um, which I guess is a, is a talking point. It's another one of the mandates of this sort of format, where maybe if you want to play the class you're most comfortable with, you know, for for Tice that is Druid, but Tice is only really a mid range Druid player, so he has to now add this extra Druid deck to his lineup and actually goes ahead and three O's this tournament with a deck that he's not familiar with. Yeah, but this shows the diversity of the format, I guess, right? Because we can see. Uh, matchups between aggro decks and matchups between control decks at the same time, and they will switch around each time. So uh, it, it's very interesting to see how it will pan out in the round of eight, because we know Zetalot will face ties, because that's how the bracket works. So uh -huh. Priest against Druid, which is in general, I would say, not really favoring um, Zetalot, but he plays a very defensive lineup with the Death Lords with the Flash Heals, with the Silk of Healings, and if he's able to um, put those Death Lords on board against the little minions from the Aggro Druid, mm -hmm. but those minions will not change that uh, that that um, kind of uh, position on, on, on his side, on Zedalot's side, against a mid-range Druid, because mid-range Druid plays bigger minions that are have, uh, more difficult to remove for the Priests. So it, it will be a very interesting matchup, but for now, 
Congratulations to Dice. He pulls a 3-0 against Colento. So that's something to brag about, right? And Colento is knocked out from the tournament. Just, just like, like that. Just like yeah. that, without <laughs> winning a single game. Yeah. Uh, but it uh, seems like Tice is on the roll. And after winning the tournament just 10 hours ago, right? That, that was 10 hours ago. He was yeah. playing in the in the final 10 hours ago, and he's playing again in a tournament. And uh, he will be playing tomorrow in the round of eight. But for now, this is the end of the second match. And the uh, next match that we'll be playing today will be Ostkaka, so the world champion versus Ikop, who is in everything, apparently. So um, we'll go in a short break right now. So stay, stay with us, guys. This is the G2 class. Legends, a one class tournament. After the break, we'll explain exactly the rules again because we have more viewers right now. So we'll go again um, through the, through the through the rules to explain everything uh, to every viewer. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 